If you ask a group of beekeepers how to manage heat for your hives in the summer, most are probably going to tell you to add top ventilation. And if you ask a group of beekeepers how to manage moisture over the winter, most are probably also going to tell you to add top ventilation. But I don't subscribe to that advice. Let me tell you why. When we talk about insulation or ventilation for beehives, we're usually thinking about winter conditions, how to help the bees best survive over winter. But these considerations also apply for the summertime. Because winter is often the primary consideration though, I want to first talk about the advice to add top ventilation in the winter time. The advice to add top ventilation to a hive over winter is often given with the consideration that you need to remove excess moisture from the hive. And with that top ventilation, the warm moist air from the inside will vent out of the top. But the problem with venting that warm air out the top is that it has to be replaced and that replacement comes in the form of colder air that comes in through the lower entrance. From the start, this seemed like a problem to me, that you're creating a chimney effect in which the bees have to generate more heat over the winter to replace the warm air that's lost. Now, experimentation was done by Edwin Anderson in 1943, and he determined that heat is not really lost through that upper entrance. But in 2017, Derek Mitchell published a paper in the American Bee Journal that picked apart Edwin Anderson's research. In Anderson's study, he compared hives with and without top ventilation, and he used one single light bulb as a heat source in each hive, and he used one single thermometer to measure the temperature at the top of the hive. And he found that there wasn't a significant temperature difference. Because he observed that the temperature remained the same at the level of his thermometer, he concluded that no heat was lost. Derek Mitchell pointed out the flaws in Anderson's research in using only one thermometer, in that he measured the temperature at the top of the hive, but that doesn't tell us how far down that cushion of heat goes. Mitchell found, like Anderson did, that the addition of top vents didn't change the temperature at the top but it did change the depth of that heat cushion within the hive. So what happens is that the air at the top of the hive down to the level of the ventilation remains warm. But below that ventilation opening, the temperature drops as the heat is vented out. I'll publish a link in the description to Derek Mitchell's paper so that you can read his results for yourself. For me, knowing that heat is in fact lost when top ventilation is added tells me that we can make it easier on the bees if we help them to retain their heat. Since I've started keeping bees, I've had a preference for the insulated lay-ins hives. It's been my observation that the bees in the insulated hives survive very well and use a lot less of their honey resources over the winter. I've had such good success with the insulated Layens hives that when I overwinter my Langstroth hives, I'll also wrap them completely in insulation, including insulating the top. Doing this has given me excellent survival over the winter. Recently, I've also started insulating all of my hive lids. Let me explain. One thing that many Layens beekeepers deal with myself included, when circumstances are right, is comb collapse. The Layens frames are nice and deep, which gives lots of benefits for overwintering. It lets the bees out this nice, beautiful comb from top down. I've expressed in other videos why I have a preference for the Layens hives. But Layens frames, when they're wired to support the comb during extraction, can be prone to comb collapse. That's because the wires often run vertically, which doesn't provide vertical support for the comb. And that's not often a problem. After all, in nature, the bees build the comb without any support. But if you have circumstances where you have nice, soft, fresh comb, and let's say your spring nectar flow has been particularly strong, so that nice, soft, fresh comb is now full of nectar and possibly capped honey, so it's heavy and it's soft, and then you get a heat wave. This is the situation we had a couple years ago. We had a great flow in the spring, and then we had a sudden early heat wave, and a lot of beekeepers, myself included, saw frames of honeycomb 
collapse and those resources lost. Now in many cases the bees will recover that honey that's lost and they'll use it to build new comb or will store that honey in other cells. But sometimes if the comb collapse is extreme you can lose a colony. There are different ways that beekeepers have dealt with comb collapse. I've employed a couple. One is that on many of my frames I've started wiring my frames differently using wires that run diagonally and cross. Another though is just to manage the heat inside of the hive better. Much like the insulation in your house helps you to moderate heat fluctuations within the house, good insulation in the hive can help to moderate heat fluctuations within the hive and make the bees work less to cool the hive down. Now the insulated lay-ins hive already has an inch and a half of insulation in the walls and the bottom. But as I mentioned, the standard top lid for the 20 frame hives is ventilated. Wouldn't it make sense to reduce the amount of solar radiation from the sun that's heating the interior of the hive by insulating the roof as well? And so that's what I did. For each of my insulated lay-ins hives, I've added three inches of insulation to the lid. The way I do this is really pretty simple. The lid already has an airspace at the top and it rests on the edge of the hive on these lid supports that are put around the sides, which is just a three quarter inch by three quarter inch strip of wood. Above these rests is about a three inch space. To add the insulation in, I simply pull out these supports. I lay in three inch bats of rock wool. For those who aren't familiar with rock wool, it's a lot like fiberglass insulation, but not as itchy. I cut a piece of one eighth inch thick plywood to lay over top of the rock wool, and then I put those support strips back in place to hold it all in. It's simple and provides a permanently insulated lid for my hives. The outcome of fully insulating my hives is that I haven't seen any comb collapse since I've started fully insulating the lids as well as the sides. Now that in itself is not a proof because as I mentioned the conditions have to be right in order for you to have comb collapse anyway. Another outcome is that I've seen less bearding on the outside of my fully insulated hives as compared to my non-insulated hives. Bearding is a behavior where the bees will move out of the hive and cover the front or hang off of the bottom like a beard. And they often do this when the hive heats up to reduce the amount of bees inside the hive and improve the air circulation. Seeing less of this tells me that the bees are not having to work as hard to cool the hive down. By fully insulating the hive, I'm roughly replicating the interior of a hollow tree with thick wood walls. But what about the issue of moisture in the hive over winter? Well, the fact is that moisture in the hive is not necessarily a concern. It's only an issue if that moisture condenses above the bees and then drips down onto the bees over winter. Condensation will occur where there's the greatest transfer of heat. In other words, where there's the least insulation. So by having an inch and a half of insulation in the sides and three inches of insulation in the top, any condensation that occurs should occur on the sides of the hive and not above the bees. As long as the hive is snug, where excess moisture from rain or snow is not getting in, then whatever moisture is inside of the hive is just gonna be a result of the bees' natural biology. And in the spring, that moisture condensed on the sides of the hive can be critical to the colony's survival. When the colony starts producing brood in the spring, the bees need moisture to add to the pollen in order to feed the developing larvae. I've personally noticed that one of the things the bees are desperately gathering when they first start flying in the spring is water from our bird bath. And that's even when I haven't done anything to vent out excess moisture. Overall, it seems that fully insulating my hives has made it better for the bees which makes it easier for me as a beekeeper. If you want to know more about how bees overwinter, check out this video. Otherwise, you might watch this one that YouTube has selected especially for you. I want to give a special shout out and thanks to those who support me through Patreon.com. If you find content like this value, I hope that you'll also consider joining my Patreon community. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.